Good day, and welcome to the Post Cabinet Briefing for September 8 and 11, 2017. I am Les Roy Williams. The formal meeting of the Cabinet took place on Friday, September 8, and Monday, September 11, 2017. The meeting was chaired by Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris. Here are the salient matters that were discussed at that meeting. Friday, September 8, 2017. Cabinet met on Friday, September 8, 2017 to receive a post-Hurricane Irma update and to plan for the pending Hurricane Jose. The Chair of the National Emergency Operations Center provided the information that 90% of water supply to homes had been restored. However, due to the lack of electricity in some areas, pumps were non-functional and that would have affected some areas in terms of water distribution. Minister Richards reported that only one person remained in a designated shelter and that almost all of the affected houses had been covered with tarpaulin provided by the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, and the St. Kitts Nevis Red Cross. He was appreciated of the manner in which the district teams, including volunteers, had operated throughout the crisis. Generally, the public had heeded the warnings and advisories, and barring any damage from Hurricane Jose, the country was in a relatively good position when compared to some of the neighboring islands. The Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Eugene Hamilton, provided a preliminary estimate on the number of farms that had been affected by Hurricane Irma. However, a final assessment had not yet been completed. Crops and fruit trees were severely impacted. Cabinet considered preparations in anticipation of Hurricane Jose, and it was agreed that independent celebrations would be scaled down in order for persons to concentrate on recovery and relief efforts. The details of the revised calendar would have been announced in a subsequent national broadcast by the Honorable Prime Minister. It was decided by Cabinet that schools in the Federation would reopen for the start of the new school year on Monday, September 11, 2017, weather permitting. The Cabinet noted an offer from the Government of St. Lucia, re post Hurricane Irma technical assistance to speeding up our national recovery efforts in the restoration of water and electricity supply to residences and businesses in the Federation. As such, a team from St. Lucia's National Electricity Company, Lucilec, would arrive in the country over the weekend. Cabinet met on Monday, September 11, 2017, to have a continued national assessment of the aftermath of Hurricane Irma. Consider the plight of our Caribbean neighbors who were badly affected by the storm and what can practically be done for them in terms of humanitarian outreach and determine effective outreach to our citizens living in these hurricane affected areas. The Minister of Public Infra Infrastructure, the Honorable Ian Liburd, provided the Cabinet with an interim assessment of post Hurricane Irma recovery efforts. Minister Liburd noted that almost 100% of water reconnections were already done. He also informed the Cabinet that there were a number of areas still without power. These areas include Bearfords, parts of Keys, Otley's Level, and Bellevue to Newton Ground. The issue of resumption of a regular ferry service between St. Kitts and Nevis was also discussed, as all our vessels were either at Marina Telka in New Guinea, St. Kitts, 
or in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Charters of some of these ferries were being considered regarding transportation of our citizens wishing to return home. The boats were also being looked at, re, the transfer of relief supplies. However, a discussion with the Director General of the OECS indicated that transportation for the time being is restricted to air transport. Given the number of sunken ships in the harbors of affected territories, which may make navigation perilous. Out of concern for the plight of our brothers and sisters in hurricane-affected areas, such as Sabre, St. Eustatius, St. Bartholomew, St. Martin, and Guilla, the British Virgin Islands, and the United States Virgin Islands, a team led by the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mark Brantley, travels on Thursday, September 14th, to Anguilla and St. Martin. General Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris will travel to Anguilla on Wednesday, September 13th as part of the OECS Monetary Council's delegation. The government noted the privately funded effort on the way to evacuate Indian nationals from St. Martin to St. Kitts. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has been contacted by the Indian High Commissioner based in Diana, who has requested the humanitarian assistance of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. This effort is intended to allow the entry of these Indian nationals into St. Kitts and Nevis for their transit onwards to their home country via the Robert Llewellyn International Airport. This has become necessary since the airport facility in St. Martin are not yet functional. The cabinet agreed that although this initiative is considered humanitarian, there will be no relaxation of our immigration policies. This has been the end of the post-cabinet briefing for September 8th and 11th, 2017. I am Les Roy Williams. Director General of the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service. Thank you for viewing and have a good day. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS, St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.